I'm starting this history of calculus long before Newton and Leibniz. In ancient Greece in 225 BC, a man by the name of Archimedes was desperately trying to do his calculus homework before calculus was actually invented. He sought to find the area under a sector of a parabola, and he did so by inscribing a triangle within it that had the same base and height as the sector, and then he added the areas of smaller and smaller triangles onto infinity. And by doing this, he was able to find that the area under the parabolic sector is four-thirds the area of the large triangle. He didn't directly say that he was using an infinite series because back in ancient Greece, if anyone was like, infinite series, they were like, <laughs> Still, here we see the origins of the school of thought that would become integration. Over 1,800 years later, Cavalieri jumped on the preliminary integration bandwagon and referred to the lines that he believed constituted an area beneath a curve as indivisibles of which there were an infinite number. And in this way, he found that the integral of x to the m from 0 to a is a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Fermat came in and was able to generalize these results, and he also created an algorithm for finding locations of maxima and minima of a function by finding the zeros of what one might consider to be the derivative. He essentially defined it as f of x plus e minus f of x over e when e equals 0. And if we forgive this division by zero error, this actually looks a lot like one of the formal definitions of derivative, except instead of e actually being zero, e just needs to approach zero. Unfortunately, this flaw coupled with the fact that the dude wasn't really one for proofs at this time, meaning that Fermat earns the Marchetti seal of disapproval, which he seems to also believe all my work has earned. And one of these days I'm gonna tell my story on Oprah. And she's gonna be like, come on, just let it all out, and I'll be like, all he did was sit there with his integral shape whipped and yell, math, math now, math like your life depends on it because it does. There were plenty of other trailblazers in the history of calculus, but I think I'll just skip ahead to the two most unequivocally famous fathers of calculus, whose rivalry has caused many mathematicians to unfriend each other on Facebook. Yes, I'm referring to Sir Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, whose hair is rivaled only by my own. Sorry, Mr. Marchetti, but it's true. Now, Newton saw the world like this. Imagine a particle moving on its jolly way, drawing a curve. X and Y are the coordinates, and since they are changing or flowing, I shall call them fluents. I shall represent the instantaneous rate of change of Y as Y with a dot over it. And I shall represent the instantaneous rate of change of X as X with a dot over it. These rates of change are called fluxions. With these ideas concerning fluxions, Newton pioneered the fundamental ideas concerning calculus. Like, for example, when he was seeking the ratio of tiny change in x to tiny change in y, for y equals x to the n, he constructed an infinite series and then said, let O vanish. Mathematicians really just judge Newton by his intentions at this point to say that he meant the limit as O goes to zero. And we're left with the power rule. Leibniz's concept of the derivative was the limit of change in y over change in x as the change in x approaches zero. Leibniz also came up with a lot of our modern notation for calculus. Both Leibniz and Newton expressed the fundamental theorem of calculus, but I like geometrically expressing Leibniz's reasoning. He was able to relate his concept of the derivative to the area under a curve by drawing a rectangle to approximate the area, then finding a limit as a change in x approaches zero for change in area over change in x. The area of the rectangle just under the curve is y times delta x, and the area of the entire rectangle is the quantity y plus delta y times delta x. Now as delta x goes to zero, so does delta y. So, in other words, the derivative with respect to x of the area under the curve equals y. And that is the fundamental theorem of calculus. I guess if there's anything to take away from this, it's that so many people contributed to the long and illustrious history of calculus that if you want to blame someone for your pre-AP test stress, probably best to blame Marchetti.